Hello, in this video I will be talking about some of the most common side effects with tamoxifen and how to manage them. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to this channel. We put new content out every week, often content that you've asked us to put out in response to comments or questions. I'd also love to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. Yerba incorporates information from your medical records after you give us secure permission. We show you all the treatments you've had in a timeline, outline the different types of treatment you might hear about, go over the pros and cons of each, and tell you what to expect with each one. It takes really complicated information and makes it simple. We don't use jargon or really long medical terms. We put it in plain language for people to understand. So tamoxifen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, which you can imagine why we abbreviate that as a CIRM. Tamoxifen is an interesting medication. It looks like estrogen to the body, especially breast tissue. Now, if your breast tumor has estrogen or progesterone receptors on it, it's wide open to estrogen in the body. Picture sort of a seat or a receptacle that estrogen in your body, even after you go through menopause, is made by your body and then can sit in the little receptacle or chair on the tumor cells, if there are any in your body. Tamoxifen looks enough like estrogen that it sits in those receptors, and now estrogen can't get into the receptors. So while tamoxifen mimics estrogen, it's not as powerful as estrogen in leading to the cells to divide and grow. Tamoxifen mimics estrogen and takes its place. So tamoxifen also affects other tissues in the body, sometimes for good, like it helps your bone density and it lowers cholesterol just like estrogen, but it can also cause you, because you don't have as much estrogen getting to other tissues, to feel like you're going through menopause. It actually does not cause menopause. Tamoxifen does nothing to the ovaries. So if your ovaries are working, tamoxifen does not put you into menopause, but you can sure feel like you're in menopause. People get things like night sweats or night chills and hot flashes or flushes, whatever term works for you. And these can come on like a wave, often at the worst times. You're about to give a presentation or everybody's looking at you at a family dinner or you're rushing to get somewhere. And then these hot flashes can overwhelm you. That can happen when you're sleeping. And in fact, studies have been done and have shown that People who don't think they're having hot flashes or night sweats actually are, and this interferes with the quality of your sleep. So this can be a really distressing side effect. There are some things that you can do, and then I'll talk briefly about some medications that can be prescribed with a couple caveats about that. The first thing to do is look at what can you control in your environment? What do you put in your body? How are you sleeping? What are you wearing? And then I'll give you some other tips for how to manage these when they arise. So try to avoid caffeine, try to avoid spicy food, and try to avoid smoking. Nicotine actually can dilate the blood vessels as well as constrict them, and smoking or vaping or any use of nicotine can make your hot flashes worse spicy foods, um, really pungent foods can also make hot flashes worse as ca and caffeine. Caffeine is associated with blood vessel dilation and constriction, which is kind of what's going on with a hot flash or hot flush or night sweat. There are some other things that you can do in what you wear and your bedroom. If you're having night flashes, night sweats or hot flashes, make sure you're in a cool room. A lot of people will set up a fan at the bedside or a fan at their feet, and that can help them regulate their temperature in the middle of the night. Now, of course, if you get chilled and hot and chilled, you'll be turning that fan on and off. You may want to think more about your sheets. You can buy sheets that help you sleep cooler. And I know it sounds intuitive. I know it sounds common sense, but sleep in breathable clothes and wear breathable clothes during the day. 
it's amazing how much heat polyester and even silk can trap in the body and can make you sweat more than you would expect it. And again, this might seem like common sense, but a lot of people have told us it's so helpful to hear this. There are actually pajamas and nightgowns you can get that help with hot flashes and night sweats. This might not answer everything for you. If you find that this is interfering with your quality of life and committed to staying on tamoxifen, one of the things that really helps people is to practice relaxation. Even if you're not feeling anxious, getting very intentional and mindful every day, just 10 minutes, you're not meditating, you're just relaxing. You can settle into a chair or into the ground or while you're walking and just practice deep breathing. This has actually been as helpful as medications. It's actually really powerful in helping people control their hot flashes, which are often triggered by emotions, whether it's anger or happiness, embarrassment, stress of any sort. Yoga also may help. Now, I can't say that yoga is the answer for everybody or that deep relaxation is the answer for everybody, but if it's something that works for you, that could be so helpful. I'm not going to go into detail here, but there are medications that people can take that treat hot flashes. This is everything from drugs that are typically used for anxiety and depression, such as SSRIs, selective serotonin receptor inhibitors. There's also a class of medicine called SNRIs, and this works in a similar way. There's a lot said about these medications that people don't like. I am not saying they're a panacea, a cure-all, by any means. But many people have found these to be very helpful. It takes a while for them to work. It can take up to six weeks for them really to help. And they may obviously work by helping people with anxiety. There's some other things that can be done that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but people who are really suffering from hot flashes related to tamoxifen or not can have an intervention to make the vagus nerve, which is one of our nerves, less sensitive. And you can also get Botox into parts of your body that sweat excessively. Again, I'm not going to go into those, but I want you to do some research, ask your medical team what could be available to you. The next thing I'd like to talk about is something that people have noticed related to tamoxifen, and that's a sense of fogginess, of cognitive fogginess. Estrogen, we often think, helps us be sharp, though some studies have shown that cognition actually improves after menopause, so it's a little bit mixed. Like many things, it's not cut and dried. If people are having problems, if you're having problems with remembering words or thinking of terms or forgetting things, much of that could actually be from the cancer diagnosis and its treatment and all the distraction and things that are going on in your life in addition to tamoxifen. So what can you do if you're having problems with your cognition, your thinking or your memory? It's often executive function like memory and concentration. Well, the key thing is Remember what I said about sleep, that even if you're not aware you're having hot flashes and night sweats, we know that many people are. We've done studies where we've looked at skin impedance and it appears that people are indeed having flushing and hot flashes and night sweats even when they don't wake up. So talking with your medical team about ways to improve your sleep can be really helpful, whether that's exercising in the morning instead of later in the day, whether it's getting the hot flashes treated through the things I just spoke about. That's really important to make sure you're taking care of all of you. Are you getting enough nutrition? Are you managing mood and anxiety? Do you have time outside every day? And then the other thing you can try are cognitive exercises. I'm sure you've heard that Sudoku and crossword puzzles are thought to improve cognition, although really large studies don't actually support that they do, but many people find that they help. One thing that can help is learning another language. There are lots of apps for learning a language, and that actually has been shown to improve word finding and name recollection parts of our cognition that are so distressing to us when we lose them. The other thing I'd like to talk about, and this is the last of the most common side effects I'll be covering in this video, are problems with vaginal, vulvar, and sexual health. 
So it's the case that some people on tamoxifen actually get more lubrication. Remember, tamoxifen is a funny drug in terms of what it does in different parts of the body. And some people actually find they get more lubrication in the vagina and vulvar area when they're taking tamoxifen. But many people get vaginal dryness, dryness of the vulva, and that can lead to problems with physical intimacy. This is really important. We never want to make it seem like we are dismissing this side effect. Our sexual health is part of our overall health. Even if we're not partnered, we're still sexual beings. So if you have vaginal and vulvar dryness, we generally do not recommend estrogen replacement therapy to the whole body. If this is a serious side effect in you, it is possible that you may be a candidate for a small amount of topical estrogen in the area of the vagina, vulva, and urethra where our pee comes out. We do have a video about hormone replacement therapy I'd love to encourage you to watch if you're interested in this topic. But there are lots of other things you can use that will help with lubrication. In general, the ones that you and I think of that are advertised are actually not as good. They tend to pill up and they don't stay on the skin. So there are some that are much better and your pharmacist or your medical team can help you. We do try not to mention brand names, but you might want to look for something that it will be a little more expensive than the things you heard about when you were growing up that people talk about that are advertised in magazines. There are some that are more expensive but much more effective. I'd also like to talk about hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a natural product and it's actually what's in mucus and used regularly, hyaluronic vaginal suppositories can help with lubrication more than typical lubricants that I just mentioned that you get at a drugstore or a grocery store. Many people tell me they don't want to explain that this is really bad so they discount their symptoms. Explaining how it interferes with your life is a way to help your team see precisely the impact it has on you, whether it's hot flashes, night sweats, hot flushes, cognition, or vaginal symptoms, sexual side effects. I hope this has been helpful. If you have a tip or a comment, put that below. We do get back to you. Please be kind. It, we usually get back within one to two weeks. We do the best that we can. And as always, thank you for watching.